<laughs> it's my birthday. Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to another episode of Shorehaven Pier, which as you know by now is pretty much a rip-off of Brighton Pier. Let's just get that reference out of the way with right now, shall we? So last week we were adding in the Eurofighter and our first rides. So this week, just to change it up a little, we're going to add in a coaster and some more rides. But do you know what? I might just throw in a Chacho toilet for good measure. Let's go. Oh, you guys, have I told you it's my birthday yet? I'm so excited I could quote lines from 50 Cent, but I'm not old enough to know who he is. And I'm definitely not finding new grey hairs every single day, that's for sure. But hey, let's move on swiftly from that and talk about what's in front of us. It's the Vacoma Whirlwind, and this was suggested by a couple of people, actually, to put on to the pier. And it's the perfect fit for the type of pier that we're going for. There used to be one on Clacton Pier, I believe it's now over in Buenos Aires. So <laughs> they've got the pleasure of this coaster now. And it also means, by the way that we get to go and rip off someone else's pier. <laughs> and I'm alright with that. But yeah, it's the perfect coaster for this pier. It's compact, it's thrilling. It's got a pretty decent throughput as well, actually. Even though it doesn't seem to be attracting riders at the moment, I'm sure it will <laughs> Late, later on. It's fine. So... What you do is you come from this station here, you go into this really, really long, uh, drawn out lift hill, and then you come into this curve around here, and it continues around into a corkscrew, then you go into an overbank to turn here, it continues into another corkscrew, into another overbank turn, and into the brake run. It's beautifully simple, and I had no idea that this coaster even existed as a type until someone suggested it. So, I'm loving your suggestions, by the way. Uh, some of them are out there, let's be honest. I mean, some of you might need to rein in your expectations, you are dealing Dealing with a Victorian structure that's been up for 200 years, you're not going to get a Giga, you're not going to get an SLC, and you're also not going to get a Woody on this kind of pier. The structure is just not strong enough, and dealing with British winter, and I mean, I know the Americans, you guys have got to deal with hurricanes and stuff, but British winter and big coasters on piers do not go well together. <laughs> so elsewhere on the pier, uh, I've started to sort of flesh out how I want this pier to go. So I've moved some of the rides around here. Uh, I do have plans for the bits in here. So there's going to be a log flume. I do want to put a third coaster in here, but I don't know what that coaster is going to be just yet. You can probably guess, but I need to decide what's going to go and where it's going to go. So that's fine. I Definitely, definitely, definitely wanted to have a drop tower. Uh, there's a drop tower that stood on a travelling fair uh, that travels around, obviously. If it's a travelling fair, so it's kind of clue in the title, really. Uh, that I wanted to put on the end of the pier. So you would get a travelling drop tower onto a pier, but we need to talk about that in a later episode because there are some things that you need to consider, especially when it comes to the wind and the weather and whatever. And then down this way, uh, I've just, as I said, I've just started to kit out where I want everything on the pier but this is our area of focus for for this episode uh, you will see that I've added in some rides so uh, the waltzer I can't take any credit for I have already got that as a blueprint I used it in Fundy Fun Sport and I'm using it again on this pier because it is so awesome just look at it yes like it's just the perfect 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 ride uh, and I just couldn't do better myself, so I thought I'm going to re—I'm going to reuse it. So credit where it is due. Unfortunately, my memory does not serve me where, very well. I don't remember who it was originally. I will find out and put it in the comments. <laughs> but thank you for this. This is this is this is awesome. Uh, and then we've also got our whirly rig. So of course you're going to have a whirly rig. Why would you not have a whirly rig? Uh, it's it's yeah, it's on there. I wanted it to be a little bit further down the pier, but actually I decided that I was going to put it here because I had a bit of space to fill. Surprising, actually, how much space you do uh, you do actually have in this area. And then we've got ourselves two flat rides that are really, really close together. Now, <laughs> you're probably sitting there thinking, well, this isn't very realistic. Well, actually, yes, it is. Brighton Pier. Yeah, we're going back to Brighton. So <laughs> let's deal with it. Uh, so Brighton Pier has a Zampolo Air Race and it's stuck right in the middle of the thoroughfare. Like, it's almost like they've just gone, let's put this ride on the pier because we've got space to put it. It's in the way. It's garish. It's like proper full on there. And this is what I wanted with the insanity. The actual air race that we've got in the game is far too big for what we wanted to achieve on the pier. I mean, it would take up literally this space in the middle. We couldn't squeeze it in like we have here. So uh, this is what I have done with the uh, with the insanity. I wanted it to be impending. I wanted it to be plopped there because that's where they've got space. And I also wanted it to be raised up so that we can do a bit of decorating job on it. And the pad on the insanity is actually small enough to be usable. So we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, so that's why we that's why that's there. Um, and then the afterburner, 
this I don't know I don't I don't know how I'm gonna deal with a pad on this because look it's just ridiculous I'll find a way I always do uh, but it's got the clearance here and I'm what I'm thinking is you I can't stop the guests exiting from these stairs but they exit halfway down so I'm thinking if I were to put some Harris fencing in along here and along here you might then have a bit of a gap for people to come into this area or they might use it as storage I need to see how I'm gonna deal with this uh, with this bit first just in case you were wondering this doesn't work it doesn't stop guests from using <laughs> from using the stairs. I thought I was going to be onto a winner, and I thought I was going to find something new about the uh, about the game. Unfortunately, unfortunately not. Uh, so they are still going to use these stairs, and that's okay. Like I say, let's not fight with the game. It is what it is. Like, you know, it's just like these path curbs. I'm trying desperately to to ignore them. I know there's going to be stuff that I'm going to be able to do to hide them and to to make like sense of them. But right now, it's really really upsetting the purist in me. <laughs> Because <laughs> it looks awful. Watch this space. We'll make it. We'll make it make sense. And then, of course, we have the return of the Chacho toilets. So uh, nobody's pointed out that we've got no toilets on the pier. By the way, we do. It, they're in here, but I didn't point them out in the last episode. So uh, yeah, we've got toilets, and it's about time. <laughs> but they're not used as much as I thought they were going to be. So I'm going to kick these out. Uh, they're going to be proper toilets, and they're going to be in the style of the rest of the pier as well. So that makes only perfect sense. Uh, and then we've got these bungee jumpers so i use these in uh fundy fun spot i also use them in disneyland as well um and it just makes sense to have these here they are perfect space fillers i need to do the uh the barriers and stuff to stop guests walking through um and i need to put harris fencing and decoration and what around here but uh yeah this was just like a space that i didn't want to put a ride but i wanted something here uh, i could have put like a mini arcade or whatever but no it feels okay to have this uh, to have this here so that's where we are sat at the moment i need to go off and do some more work and i'll see you in a mo all right then you guys it's the middle part of the video you know what that means i'm going to show you something that's not finished it's going to be a complete mess you guys are going to skip to the next bit of the video so you can see what it looks like when it's all done and everything's going to be okay we're all going to live happily ever after because that's what we do around here i'm actually quite enjoying doing this birthday stuff though did i mention it's my birthday like this idea of doing a small episode has meant that I focus my attentions on this area and I'm and I'm loving it so let's start over here with our coaster you'll spot that the colors have changed it's now purple and white uh, we've now got some supports there turns out there was one on the workshop actually that gave me some inspiration for support so what I've done is I've actually used uh, that as inspiration so if I remember I'll put a link to the actual workshop item in the description if not then search for Vacoma Whirlwind and you'll find it uh, it's actually perfect and it turns out that ours were pretty much the same scale as each other so the supports fitted in quite nicely I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing <laughs> but uh, if you have a look at the Clacton Pier one the support structure on that was really, really dense and really immense. I'm not going to go to that extreme because the pictures that are available on Google aren't good enough to be able to uh, piece together the structure. So what I've done is I've pieced together the best uh, the best as I can with other models, you know, like permanent structures and stuff. So that's what we've got here. Lots of supports going on here uh, and the bracing that would be on the pier and stuff. So this is pretty much how it would be. I've done this fencing style. So this is nice and simple. It's just the girder and the big, uh, big fences turned uh, into each other uh, and then this is the station so uh, these are the pictures i took of the wild mouse station i wanted something very very similar feeling but i didn't want it to feel janky and shack like so i wanted it to be a bit more put together um and a bit more like a bit more of a structure a bit more permanent so this is what i've done here uh, i have made it into a zigzag uh, into a zigzag roof it's going to be an absolute nightmare for uh, see there's the mess there it is uh, <laughs> so it's... Oh, i did promise you a mess so this is going to be a bit of a nightmare for drainage but it's uh, but it's actually going to be okay it's all going to be fine it'll work out in the wash but yeah we've got this zigzag and all of the lights and stuff going on here it's a bit more permanent in nature uh, for the actual station itself and then inside here we've got all of the tread plates going on so uh, because they would essentially be uh, some kind of a traveling version of a coaster so it would all be tread plated it wouldn't be plumbed into the ground so you wouldn't have concrete and stuff uh, as such so it's all tread plated uh, detailing stuff needs to be done in here so i still need to do all the theme makers toolkit pass and whatever the back end just like the uh the Eurofighter we did is the maintenance area it's hidden kind of from guest view um but not from the break run because obviously you can't you just can't do it so but it's fine 
this is all you'd need. Uh, just a bit of cluttering is going to be needed in this uh, in this area, so uh, it's all uh, it's all good. This is the front end, and this is the queue. So again, this is very much very similar to the Wild Mouse queue setup. Uh, I just wanted this to be nice and simple, you know, where they walk up the tread plate stairs and then just along the top. It doesn't have to be a long queue because this has got got quite a good throughput. So uh, this would actually deal with quite the number of guests that would be on the pier. So we're all good. It doesn't have to be like the Eurofighter, which is uh, which is longer. Whirly rig, nothing really much has happened here. Uh, I've just put some stuff going in, uh, like, you know, fences and whatever, signs and whatever are needed on, on this bit. But this is still where I'm fighting with my inner purist because I'm hating these curbs. I did have the opportunity to think whilst I was away for work about what I was going to do about this because I was like, oh, there's got to be a, oh, there's got to be a workaround. There's got to be something I can do. And I thought, I bet I could use terrain. I'll talk about that shortly because you can't it's the short answer uh then we come over to the insanity and i wanted this to feel like a little bit of a traveling uh, traveling ride and the fabry uh, versions of the traveling rides are relatively bland actually they don't really have much going to them they are literally just the pad and some kind of a front queue and sometimes a backboard but not always a backboard so i kind of wanted to get that feeling going on here i need to put some more signs and stuff up right i need to put a little bit more decoration on this but this is kind of almost done this in front of here by the way is another billboard with a, a repeating texture image you can just find this on google i think i googled graffiti repeating texture uh, and found this one so it works perfectly for this ride, actually. I was like, actually, the colour schemes and whatever are uh, are spot on for this. I, I love it. I like, yeah, I love it. Uh, over on the waltzers, you've seen this one before. Uh, as I said, the very first update uh, at the beginning of the episode. This uh, was actually used in Fundy funds but no it wasn't it was Disneyland so this was used in Disneyland uh, as a as a blueprint and all I've done here is just put some Harris fencing around the front here uh, and then just cut off this front bit but in Brighton it, there is no queue you just sort of wait out the front here and uh, you just get on the ride as soon as it's as soon as it's done it doesn't actually ever get a queue so it's cool and then we come over to the claw to the KMG afterburn so <laughs> this this was a bit of a nightmare to pull together. I've decided to do some kind of custom supporting, but not totally custom. Uh, and I had bigger, grander plans for this. And I had a back plate sorted, and it was looking more like a travelling version. You know, like where you had uh, the, the ramp and stuff in the front here with all of the gates and whatever. And then I had a chat with some people that I used to know from my previous life. And they said that they wouldn't have a back plate because of the wind on the pier for the same reason that you wouldn't have a wooden coaster. The structure of it becomes just one massive wall for the wind to hit and then it just becomes a sail. And then it just gets damaged and it's open to the elements, etc, etc. So for the same reason you wouldn't have a wooden coaster because the structure is just a solid structure like a wall, you wouldn't have a back plate here. So that kind of got rid of the black back plate. And then they said they would actually then strip down most of the travelling fair stuff uh, for the reason of corrosion. You can't see corrosion easily if you cover things with fascias. So they try and expose intentionally as much as they possibly can of the ride. And that would apply in this instance. So all of that uh, front stuff, you know, with the ramps and the fences and the raised up bits and all of the back plates and the lights and everything, it all gets stripped away. And so it actually ends up looking like a semi-permanent semi, a semi installation. And I was like, do you know what? I'll take that. I'm all right with that. <laughs> it means I've got to do less work. But what that does mean is it does start to look a bit crap because... You end up with this with this kind of setup and it looks a little bit unfinished. Still needs a few signs and still needs a little bit of touching up like around the edges and stuff. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I've seen some amazing versions of these on the workshop. Oh, you just wouldn't find them on this pier. And it's really frustrating because I really wanted to do something like that. A similar reason to this one, actually, as to why you choose this, because there's just not a lot going on for it, right? So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's what it is. And then, look, Chacho toilets are back. Of course they are. So these are like proper Victorian toilets. I mean, well, that's a wall to start with. I did promise you a mess, right? So it's fine. Uh, I need to put ceilings and stuff in here, but you'd have this, uh, like, jade green tiling on the wall is horrible it looks like a pub well it looks like a public toilet because that's exactly what it is you just walk through a wall 
Spooky. Uh, but of course you've got the toilets. So I always put the toilet cubicle doors and stuff in uh, just to make it look real. Uh, really, as realistic as possible. Need to just do the detailing and stuff in here. So, you know, posters and uh, all of the usual stuff you find in, you know, vending machine and, and, and stuff like that. So you've got male and female toilets. Uh, so I just need to kit the outside of this. And then the outside is a carbon copy of the side of the ballroom uh, wall. Just edited slightly for the, for the top here and having that exposed green brick. Just for a slight variation, just to give it enough to be different, but feeling similar and familiar. And then you've got like, the Bombora sign in the background, I love it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so you've got just this uh, stuff going on in the front here, and then the Victorian um, doors and whatever. These would actually have been toilets in the Victorian days too. So they, it's not like these would have been some kind of sitting room or whatever that uh, has been converted. These would have been the toilets and they wouldn't have changed much from the Victorian days. That's why you've got the jade green because that would have been in fashion back then. So I'm going to put the ceiling on there, put the roof on and I'll show you that uh, later on. Now let's talk about this purist fight. So there was a way that I thought that uh, I could get away with this and I, and I got quite far in with the uh, with the whole process by the way there is a way that if you take your flatten tool put it to as a hundred a uh, hundred percent and bring your size right down choose the height that you want it click and then drag it out really quickly what you end up doing is raising the terrain uh, no surprise there right that's not that's going to be a pretty crappy t tutorial for you but what well, this <laughs> Because you know that already. But now that you've got this little dump uh, that you can use, you can now flatten it out, right? And you might now be seeing where I'm going with this. Because I can flatten it out this way. And because it's a voxel terrain editor, I've got this underneath here. And I thought, oh, I now may have the ability to be able to put paths and rides and stuff on here. And be able to hide the curb. No, unfortunately not. This is not thick enough to put rides on. What you end up doing is having, it has to be, I think it's uh, 8 metres. And you flatten it out to 8 metres. And that is what you end up with. It's just too thick. Had I have had I've been able to do it with the, with the 2 metres and put the rides on there, I would have lived with the fact that it was uh, poking underneath the, uh, underneath the gantry here and that you could see it. Because most of your attention is focused on here, right? And most of your attention is focused on the fact that the curbs are there and it just looks a bit crappy and a bit shoddy. And you're in a purist fight. And if you could get away with having it on terrain, then you can lose the curbs. But I'm not happy to trade that off that's too much of a trade-off for me so i just wanted to sort of fill you in on on that thought process as to why i'm actually still going to fight my inner purist but this is better than the alternative anyway i'm going to carry on doing this i'll see you in a minute all right then you guys just like that we are done and i've not said this in a while but this turned out way better than i thought it was going to these two flat rides were giving me a little bit of anxiety they just didn't feel right and given that the inner purist is fighting with me anyway the idea of this pier is it has to feel right rather than be ultra realistic i mean we're fighting with trees in the background when it's supposed to be sea, so you know what I mean. But a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of touching up, and a little bit of theme makers toolkit, and everything has worked out perfectly. So you can see in the background, our coaster has a name. Infinite Coasters, thank you so much for your name. You are the vote winner this week. Uh, so Sea Viper is the official name. And actually, it works out quite nicely because it is a viper of the sea, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, seems only fitting that we start here uh, with the detailing work. So, the actual inside ride area, just like we did for the Eurofighter, has been kept completely blank, completely free of anything other than just a bit of maintenance stuff. Otherwise, the ride area wouldn't contain any kind of population or any kind of ecosystem. Uh, it, is, it is what it is. But the station is where the most of the work has happened. So, uh, the first thing you'll notice, probably, well, maybe not the first thing, but the first thing I would notice because I'm a weirdo, uh, <laughs> are the tread plates, warning signs along here for the, uh, for the actual pillars themselves. Now, they are actually in the guest view. They are in the guest way, so they do need to have some kind of warning signs to say, no, please don't walk into me, because, you know, it's going to hurt if you do. So that's what I've put in here. But the final detailing and whatever has all been done. So we've got all of the consoles. We've got 
uh, the electric units, we've got all of the tread plates along here, uh, so I've actually put those warning tread plates along each side, uh, just kitted it all out. We've got a roof, so I've put the roof on, <laughs> of course I've put the roof on, it's not Desk B I'm afraid, uh, I know that some of you are really wanting the return of Desk B, I mean it's in here, Desk B is in this in this pier but not for this roof, uh, I actually decided to use the Theme Makers Toolkit Square instead, because <laughs> it's a little bit friendlier on the piece count. Uh, so the sign on the front, I haven't made this animated. I didn't want to overdo it. So obviously you've got Bombora over here who has an animated sign, but it's the same font. I didn't want to overdo it. So I've just kept it as the uh, yellow and blue. And then you've actually got the animations on the uh, on the, the, the lights here. I did have strip lighting. There's a neon uh, that you can download from the Theme Makers Toolkit workshop. I did have the neon along here. And it was animated, but it was just too much. So what I settled for instead was just a little bit, a little bit of decoration. I think I said in the last episode these came from uh, a normal pack. They don't. It's the makers toolkit. Uh, so and it's like a Victorian window uh, that you pop, you place on top of glass, and it makes it look like it's uh, leaded glass. So. That's what it is. Anyway, I've just thrown a couple of bits of theming around. Now, nothing on this pier would be themed, right? So don't get excited. We're not going to be doing themed areas with exception of the track ride. That's going to need to be themed to something. But there is no theme. But what I have done is I've just put some uh, pirate stuff around here. And it actually works out quite nicely. I've let more guests into the park, by the way, because I wanted to see how the um, pier behaved under stress. So I've allowed two and a half thousand guests into this. So this is why we've now got a queue and stuff here. So, and I like it. It's good. <laughs> this is how I wanted it to be. So over to uh, Whirly Rig. Nothing really much has happened here. Just the usual compliance signs and whatever. But what I've done around the back here uh, is I've actually put some picnic benches in the attempt of hiding the curbs and stuff. So uh, this works out quite nicely, actually, because it's quite a cool little shaded area. And then in the front here, we've just got some grabber units and we've got some games units and stuff that you could uh, that you could play on. And again, it just sort of encloses the area a little bit. We've got the waltzers, so they're now actually being used. I didn't realise that I had deleted the uh, animations and it was only <laughs> it was only playing one animation. Good start. So I've changed that. We've now actually got guests riding it. Clutter and stuff along this area as well. Uh, so it's just sort of like stuff in the way. And then we come to our uh, KMG afterburner. So there we go. Nice and kitted out. Nice and finished. I like how this is. By the way, I didn't show you. Whoops. In the let's try that again. Uh, in the last update how I solved the guest issue. So we've actually got some barriers along here. So they would leave the ride this way and they leave the ride this way. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So that's what we're going to do uh, there. So that solved that problem, solved that issue. And then all I've done is I've just put a barrier and stuff along, along here as well. And then we have our uh, insanity ride. There we go, our insanity. And I like how this has turned out as well, because if you remember back to the start of the episode, I wanted this to be in the way. I wanted this to feel like it had been plonked there, and it was like, yeah, okay, it's there, but you're in the way of the, <laughs> of the afterburner and everything. Like, it's a bit close. But actually, this is exactly as I wanted it to feel. So you're walking up the, uh, the pier from this way, and there is the ride right in front of you. And now it doesn't actually feel like it's completely out of place. It feels like it should do. Whereas when I placed it down, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually really chuffed with, uh, with how this has turned out. And then that sight line there where you've got the two side by side, perfect it's exactly what i wanted exactly what i wanted because you've got the near miss now so this afterburner not only has the over the sea element where you're facing down at the sea you are then also hurtling towards another ride so this is actually quite a, an impactful uh, impactful ride as it turns out uh, <laughs> over here then i have just put in uh, some harris fencing and whatever I th if anybody wants to do some theme makers talk it signs for the bungee jump please do uh, because I there's nothing available and I don't have the talent to be able to do it unfortunately so if you do happen to want to do bungee jump signs uh, please 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 do uh, I very much would welcome them uh, but then you've got the ticket office so I've just moved this ever so slightly you wouldn't even notice that it's moved but it just was off center slightly and this was because of this sight line here in the sense you've got toilets tickets waltzer uh, Whirly rig and then Sea Viper in the background, so it just needed a little bit of work on the uh, on the sightline just to make it feel uh, feel right. And then toilet time, uh, yes, it's toilet time. Before though, I've just put a child's ride here. I need to do a little bit more work on this, uh, but I need to do the stuff at the back before I can do this because I've got a couple of plans. 
and I need to make it flow through, so it's fine. So toilets. Uh, you were probably wondering what the gap here was for. Actually, you probably weren't. Let's be honest. <laughs> I bet you didn't even notice. Uh, but it was for the sign. So that's what I've done here. Um, I do need to do some lighting in this area. I haven't done that yet. It's going to be the next episode. Again, it's because I've got plans for what's coming up. Uh, so I can't do the lighting just yet. So it will have external lighting at uh, some point. And then we walk into the toilet. And it's just like Brighton's toilet. It's really quite bland and quite like disgusting. It's that jade colour. It's just... I can... Do you know what? I say the toilets are bright and they're disgusting. They're not dirty. They're just Victorian. They're just really not modern. <laughs> so it's absolutely fine. Uh, and no, I didn't take any pictures of inside the toilets because that's weird. That's the sort of thing that gets you thrown off a pier. <laughs> so no, don't worry. This isn't an insert, a picture of something that I took on my recce. Uh, I'm not going to do that. That's just weird. The other toilets, exactly the same, just a mirror image. Uh, obviously not exactly the same. The posters and stuff are slightly different. And there's a little bit of a slight configuration change. The bins are in a different place, etc. But it contains ultimately the same stuff, right? So there's the uh, cubicles there, there's the actual bin itself and the, the hand dryers and, and, and whatever. And then from the outside, this is what they look like. I love how these turned out. Like, I'm so glad I used the other uh, part of the building, you know, the dome, for this purpose. Because it does bring the dome forward into the actual ride area. And then it also brings the entrance onto the pier as well because it's all the same style. So now the pier feels like it's coherent. It feels like it's consistent right across. Uh, and it feels like it's now an, a proper Victorian structure. And you get the Bombora sign that peeks through. Like that that's the that's the beauty of it. Like, yes, look, see? Ta-da! Love it. And then you've got the uh dodgems just through the gap there. And then I'll just put some clutter and whatever on the outside uh, of the toilets, just through there. And then just to show you the back end of the waltzers, this would kind of be used as a service and maintenance area. Um, and I bet you didn't notice it before now. And that's the entire purpose, because from a guest view, you don't know that it exists. Unless you're on the coaster, of course, then you would notice. Uh, but from the back view here, it's a relatively decent size for uh, maintenance areas and stuff. So I am absolutely, absolutely loving that. So I'm not going to show you nighttime. Like I say, I've got some work that I need to do on the lighting of this area because I need to do this bit first and then the lighting of this bit is going to feed into this bit. See if you can work out what I am talking about. But this is the view that you are going to get then from... Uh, from the walk up, from the approach, if we're wanting to go this way to see the entire pier as it stands at the moment. So there we go. That's the entire pier as it sits at the moment. I love it. Like, it's coming together so nicely. Uh, I've got a week off work next week, so I'm going to get loads done in an episode. So it's going to be like the polar opposite of this one. There's going to be so much to show you because I think most of it, most of it is going to get finished. I think the only thing I won't do is the flat ride. And that's because I need to make a decision on whether I keep it or not. What? controversial guys thank you so much for getting to the end of this video i don't know if i've told you yet it's my birthday so i'm gonna go off and be a birthday boy hooray birthday 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 <laughs> i'm getting old and i'm getting weird with it and i love it guys thank you i'll see you next week until we speak again please look after yourselves Bye bye